Hey, it's Cody. Um, it's day 13. Good. At zero milligrams of my methadone detox. It is 9.23 p.m. February 23rd, 2011, East Coast time. Um, I'm making this video basically. If you've been watching any of my other videos, if I remember right, I think I touched base a little bit explaining how, um, due to my past, unfortunately, with cigarettes and inhalation of horrible, horrible chemicals, um, I can hardly, I can hardly even smoke marijuana now to medicate myself, um, to get through the, the really tough symptoms of the methadone withdrawals, which the marijuana helps tremendously with, even just smoking it, which I'd imagine barely even touches the, sur touches the surface of my pain compared to hemp oil, but anyways, um, I'm making this video make an example, kind of, I guess, that I can't medicate because of my lungs, and that if this shit was repealed, I would have so much more, so much easier access to it, it would probably be a whole lot cheaper, and I'd be able to get oil, I wouldn't have to worry about this, I've been in pain all day, I didn't get to sleep, because I can't smoke, because my lungs are just literally... I can't... I'll smoke, I'll be okay, and... And it's not a matter of anxiety either, it really isn't. It's a physical pain in my lung that literally prevents me from breathing, and it is... Scary doesn't even touch the surface. I mean, imagine, imagine the feeling of of dying. That's what it, that's what it's like. It's like having my reality getting ripped from me. I get a sharp pain in my lung, and my hands will get sweaty. My fingers will get cold. I'll start to lose circulation. I get a little pale. I get dizzy. Um, it's really scary. It's really really scary. And I can't smoke because of that. Because obviously I can't put smoke in my lungs. And I, it almost triggers it sometimes, but at the same time, it's the only thing that helps my symptoms, and I'm going insane right now. I'm day 13, and I feel like it's day 4 or 5 right now. Like, I mean, I may seem okay, but I'm in an extreme amount of discomfort right now. Um, and I just, I snuck a couple hits in, but I regret it. I feel my lung already getting achy already. And... I just, I don't know. I wish there was a boil in front of me right now. I don't know what I can do. I mean, I do know what I can do. I just don't, I don't even have the motivation to get up and do anything normal, eat food, shit like that, let alone the process of making your own hemp oil. Um, I watched a video on Paul Gloria's channel. The last video was an interview with the producer of Run From The Cure. I, I want to say his name is Christian Lorette. I at least know his first name's Christian. I don't know where I'm getting the last part from. It's just popping in my head and I think it's crazy. But uh, he was saying something about a book that he was reading. I don't remember the girl's name, but the book was called Live Free or Die. And this woman, her name was Shauna, that's the most I can remember, unfortunately. I don't remember her last name, I wish I did. She, uh, she was having problems with pain. I don't remember specifically what, unfortunately. And smoking marijuana helped tremendously, so she was smoking but she had to smoke a lot apparently and it was she smoked so much to the point where she just couldn't put smoke in her body anymore so she asked her husband to get a vaporizer and the vaporizer ended up being junk and uh...
ended up accumulating a bunch of gunk on the inside of it but she took that gunk and ingested it daily and I guess it's been working wonders for her so I mean I don't know what I can do right now I mean I'm really I really want to smoke I'm in a lot of discomfort but I'm worried something's gonna happen I'm probably overreacting but you never know so I'm just making this video just in case because right now I am gonna try and smoke and hope everything goes okay my trick my I also live in a house full of smokers unfortunately and the secondhand smoke triggers the pain that I told you about my lung pain unfortunately so I'm the only one here who doesn't smoke out of three other smokers so um, it's hard um, not hard to, to want cigarettes I, I personally hate cigarettes now um, but uh, I hate even the idea of them but it's hard in the sense that it's hard to breathe it's literally hard to breathe it, like it triggers it's, it almost puts me into this like post lung thing like it puts me into like the preset of it right before it happens which is very rare because usually my lung pain just happens out of nowhere but with the cigarettes it's almost like oh this is about to happen you should probably sit down or something but I mean yeah I'm just making this video just in case like I said I'm sure I'll be fine I'm sure I'm over exaggerating I hope I am I mean I'm not exaggerating about the pain or how I described it it is th it's very real I mean I'm, I'm just I ho hopefully I'm overanalyzing this I really hope so I hope I'm wrong I extremely hope I'm wrong I hope I can just smoke my medicine be okay you know I'm also getting an Iolite vaporizer it's like two or three hundred bucks I'm going to be so disappointed if I spend my money on this and it, it doesn't have the same effects medicinally that smoking it does because I mean I've smoked vaporizers before and I never really thought that it made me feel the same but there wasn't one time where I smoked a vaporizer that I can remember that I wasn't drinking or on pills. So I can't really say. Um, but fuck money. I mean, my well being is where it's at, in my opinion. So the Iolite, even though it's a little expensive for a vaporizer, I hope it works. I mean,. It's not like I can get hemp oil with 300 bucks. You know, I can get hash oil, but what, what's that gonna do? You know what I mean? Unless you can put hash oil directly onto food, can you do that? Does anyone know about that? If you do, definitely get back to me. Um. I guess if the lung thing does happen, um, I'll set up my laptop and record it. It's weird when it happens, I can still talk and I seem fine, but I, oh my god, I can't explain the terror. It's, it's like someone holding a pillow over your head while someone's putting a knife into your lung and they just won't let up, they won't let you up and you're just begging and tapping and tapping and they just won't let you up. It's like drowning, basically. But then it's like right before you get to that point, like right before you get to that point where you're gonna like pass out or faint, it goes away. But each time, each episode I've had, unfortunately, has got longer and longer and longer and I've gotten closer and closer to the point of fainting. And it's getting really fucking scary. And it happens out of nowhere, like, it, ha like I, it could happen right now, I could be sitting t here talking to you and out of nowhere, the next breath I take, that's it, it just locks up, it hurts. Um, I've been to the doctors, um, they said it wasn't asthma, 
I do have asthma though, or I did when I was 12. I don't know if it is curable or whatever, but I, I don't have the symptoms of that I did when I was 12. The sim these symptoms are completely different. Asthma to me was more like a feeling like breathing in hot air. My, my neck would constrict. You could see my ribs sticking out more. This is like, you don't even have the option to take a breath. Um, but anyways, I went I went to the emergency room because I don't have insurance. You know, God bless the USA. Uh, and I, uh, I got an EKG, which I believe is like an x-ray or some sort of monitoring system of the heart. I believe anyways, and then they x-rayed my lungs, and they didn't say anything to me. Other, all they said was that they are prescribing me to Toradol, which is a anti-inflammatory and a painkiller, a very extremely mild painkiller, and it's not an opiate an analgesic, angelistic, I don't know how to pronounce the word. Um, Anyways, it's a non-opiate painkiller and and an anti-inflammatory. And they shot me up in the arm, in the muscle, and it literally felt like they snapped my arm in half. I could not move my arm for hours. It hurt so bad. I was literally in tears like a baby. And then they wrote me a prescription, which I never filled out, which I still have right now. And I mean, that night... I felt the tenseness in my chest go away a little bit, but I mean, I don't know, I don't know what to do, and, uh, and of course they gave me a follow-up doctor that costs, you know, a hundred bucks just to get in and just to set up an appointment, because I don't have insurance, so that's obviously not an option for me, maybe I should uh, spend money on a doctor and not a fucking highlight, right? But I, I don't know. I'm gonna try my own options first. Hopefully it's not too late. I don't know. I really don't know what to do at this point. I also don't even have the motivation to get up and go to the doctors due to my methadone withdrawals. But I do have the motivation to have somebody go out and buy me an Iolite with my money or s order it online and have it mailed here. You know, that doesn't. Maybe that's why I'm leaning more towards the Iolite instead of the doctor. Um. And also because I, like I said, because I don't have insurance, I want to try everything before I start going into any sort of treatment because the $100.